So here are some glass knitting needles. Uh, these here, these here are knitting needles made from pure sterling silver. Oh, these here, these are fun as well. This is ebony. These needles are made from ebony. And these here. So here is a set of cheap single pointed bamboo knitting needles. I thought I could use as props, but never did. Um, this here, this is an antique silver needle case with two needles inside. Um, these, these pretty needles are the golden tip needles. Look at this beautiful, beautiful case. Oh, talking about beautiful needles. So here, these are the lantern moon needles. And these here, these here are fake lantern needle, uh, lantern moon needles. I accidentally bought on Etsy. Looks pretty, is horrible. Oh, and these are fun as well. So these here are all my knitting needles below one millimeter. So these here, these are 0 0.25 millimeter needles. Can you believe it? Hi everyone, Norman here. As you can see, I own a lot of knitting needles and over the years so many people have asked me, Norman, how do you organize your knitting needles? Mine are always such a big mess and I can't find a thing. Well, you're lucky. Recently I had to reorganize my studio here and I thought I'd take you along and show you my current system. But of course, not everyone owns more than 1,000 knitting needles. In fact, I don't even know how many knitting needles I own. 2,000, 3,000, I never counted them. So rather than just showing my current system, I want to show you how my way of organizing my knitting needles evolved over the years, tips and tricks I have for you, so you can pick the system that works best for the size of your collection. Let's dive right into it. Level number one, the beginner. So when I started out, I basically bought a new pair of needles for every project. Some Adi needles here, some uh, Knitter's Pride needles over there, and maybe some Prim DPNs to throw into the mix. And my uh, circular needles all went into one box, and I put my DPNs here into a mug like this one. Actually, I didn't even get one of these fancy plastic boxes. I don't think they were a thing back then, so I just used an old shoe box and that's perfectly fine. I mean these days you can go to Ikea and get a plastic or a paper box like this one here for a dollar or two or Home Depot or stores like that but really an old shoe box will be fine. I would recommend adding a needle gauge to the mix that makes finding the right needle uh, so much easier because sometimes the needle size rubs off or there isn't one to begin with and then such a needle gauge is wonderful. I mean if you want to go all fancy so for example, um, Mood offers these leather tubes here where I store some of my DPNs in, but really a mug or any other thing like that is perfectly fine as a beginner. There is really no need to overthink this. Now at one point I certainly grew tired of having to buy a new needle set for each new project. And I mean that was back then Amazon, same day delivery, things like that wasn't a thing. It meant driving to the city and hoping the local yarn shop would have the needle in that size. Sometimes they needed to order things. So, And around the year 2000 that was when uh, interchangeable knitting needles became popular in Germany. I splurged on this set here. So this is a beautiful little Knitter's Pride Deluxe set. Uh, this was the first set I, that I bought and back then it was like 80 or 90 euros. And that was, I mean, I was a student, so that was a lot of money. And, you know, I actually had to save a little bit to, um, until I was able to afford that. But really it was everything I needed. And to this day, I still have the needles and I replaced some of the tips and some of the cables and added to my collection. But um, that was everything I needed. Now, they don't produce these hardwood boxes anymore these days. Um, sets come in these plastic, sturdy plastic pouches. Um, they're plastic, but they're actually not all that bad. And I think, oops, 
I think uh, they are also a lot cheaper, so they aren't $90 uh, dollars or so anymore. And typically these pouches come with extra little compartments where you can store uh, notions and extra tips and that's all you basically need. Um, most, uh, this is a higher higher set, so this too has um, a little compartment. Here we have an Adi set, or if you prefer DPNs, they also sell these uh, sets here that come in these, um, well, different kind of pouches. Some are plastic, some are um, cotton or so, for example, the Chagu uh, DPNs come in these cotton pouches. Uh, very nice. And I think as an intermediate knitter, that is all the storage system you need. Get you know, you, here on my channel you will find tons of needle reviews and watch them and then pick one set where you think, okay, this could work for me and that's basically all you need. You don't need a grand storage solution. One little pouch is all you need and it's just perfect for an intermediate knitter if you ask me. Level number three, the intermediate knitter. As you progress along your knitting journey, you typically tend to acquire more knitting needles. An interchangeable knitting needle set is fine and typically covers most of it. But then you need some two millimeter circular knitting needles and they aren't even, they are first of all not part of your interchangeable knitting needle set and they might not even be available from the brand. Or super chunky needles because you want to knit a super chunky uh, blanket or crochet hooks or cable needles, things like that. So you tend to buy more needles and odd little ends and you typically can't store them in the um, interchangeable knitting needle pouch because, the, uh, because there's just so uh, limited space and you know that shoe boxes maybe not all that practical either and for those people I actually uh, recommend investing into a proper uh, needle pouch. So these one here are made uh, by a, a German lady she's called Bodolina and I really really like them because it's a patented design and it's foldable and it comes with all these little slots and basically you open them and you see everything at a glance. It's super compact so I really really like them. This one here is for a double pointed knitting needles and here she also has um, them for uh, circular knitting needles with uh, bigger slots. Uh, it's felt um, um, so a super sustainable material very very lovely but if you I think she has a website and you might find them on Etsy but if you browse around Etsy you will find a lot of other uh, needle pouches as well. So this is one I bought quite a while ago. So it's a foldable design and then you, you have slots for double pointed knitting needles here and for circular knitting needles here and then you can just um, fold everything together and you have one pouch for all your needle for all your needles and that is I think very very practical. Now my issue with these pouches, well I have two issues with these uh, pouches. So first of all, it's uh, very difficult to see what we have. So you always have to open it and, and the second issue I do have is that it's often a bit more difficult to store your circular needles. You have to uh, coil the cables and then um, they kind of say put in it. They actually, uh, it, well, it increases the curling and then you have to pour uh, boiling water over them. So here is an alternative system. So this is a little needle organization system. Uh, a good friend of me, mine here from Vienna uh, made for me. She does all these kind of custom uh, needle organization and uh, project uh, pouches, things like that. And she made this for me. I'll insert her um, shop name up in here. I mean, she doesn't, I don't think she shops, ships internationally, but if you're from Germany or from Austria, then uh, definitely check her out. And basically, as you can see, there are various slots here and you can just insert your circular knitting needles here. There's a little stitching here uh, that shows you which needle size. And there are further uh, pouches down here. Uh, for uh, double pointed knitting needles and you can just uh, place this little hanger into your closet or into your crafts cabinet whatever you have and I think uh, the bonus is you can see these needles were actually stored in uh, such a pouch and they kind of curl and here they can hang out so I think that is quite a lovely idea. 
look around Etsy, you probably find something very similar to that, or if you know how to sew, I mean, this is super, super easy to sew. That, you know, doesn't need to be fancy, it's just, you know, two pieces of cloth with some seams in between. That's basically everything it is. And that is, I think, a very, very smart solution. Level number four, the master knitter. So I own a lot of knitting needles and in my stu uh, office I have um, a drawer, actually two drawers. So the top drawer and um, in the top drawer are all the knitting needles I use frequently and I need frequently and then the bottom drawer, are, you know, needles I haven't used in ages but still might need as a prop or for a review or if someone has a question and they go into the drawer below. And I bought one of these boxes. So these are uh, photography organizers or something like that. I bought them on Amazon. I think people in the days when people still printed out their uh, holiday pictures, you could use them to organize them. I don't do that. However, it comes with um, these little boxes inside a box, like a Russian matroshka. And here on this side are my double pointed knitting needles. And in this box, there are two millimeter DPNs and they fit in quite perfectly. I mean, you need to look that these boxes are wide enough. I think they're also small because pictures of obviously are not all one size, but here these are perfect and the DPNs fit in. And then um, I use these rubber bands here to hold them together. I think uh, some brands, uh, needle manufacturers also saw, sell these rubber bands. So I saw them clever, uh, I think sells them, but it, I saw it's like one little pouch with five rubber bands and it's like five, six, seven uh, US dollar. And I thought, well, I'm not gonna pay that. So I just, if you go to your uh, local drugstore or I don't know, you will find um, hair, hair bands, like hair rubbers to hold uh, your ponytail together or your messy bun or whatever. And you can just cut them to pieces. That's what I did. So I bought a box was like one dollar or so. I mean, they, they, those are super cheap, and you can just put uh, cut them uh, in pieces and then use them. And one box is like fifty of these. All you will ever need. And I mean, you can of course also buy uh, the official ones, but I don't see. Uh, I mean, they are basically doing the same. And then here on this side are my uh, circular knitting needles. So here the boxes are also big enough to store uh, circular knitting needles. And I think that is just a very, very lovely system. Now, apart from the big box, I also have these smaller boxes. These are just normal plastic boxes. And I put all, so here this box is exclusively for signature needle arts at, um, needles. And here is another box for Adi needles. And the reason why I do this is very simple. So the big box actually just holds my odd little ends. And if you take a look, I don't know, at stainless steel double pointed knitting needles, they look so similar. It's very, very difficult to tell them apart. And often when uh, either the, the engraving is so small, so it's very difficult to see or it wraps off. So if I was specifically looking for, I don't know, uh, Chagu uh, double pointed knitting needles in size uh, three millimeter, it, it's, it would be very difficult to find them. So I have one box for each brand. And inside there might be further little boxes. So for example, here is a little box for where I put in all the little um, little bits that come with the sets or I buy separately. Needle connectors, needle stoppers, things like that because otherwise they just kind of get lost and it keeps things more organized. So I also have uh, boxes for uh, each little needle brand. So here I have another box and this is my so-called specialty box. So inside you will find, for example, here is another small little box and here are all my super short double pointed knitting needles. Or um, here is a box full of cable needles, which I rarely need, but sometimes you need them. Or uh, these are all my super, super small knitting needles. So one millimeter, 1.75 millimeters, 
0 0.5 millimeters, things like that. Or here there are uh, silver knitting needles and um, exotic wood knitting needles or these are glass uh, knitting needles. And I have this box, this specialty box, because sometimes I need special knitting needles and then I know, or double pointed knitting needles, and then I know they, I will find them all in this box. Now when it comes to my actual knitting needle sets, I store them in my drawer as they are. I just put them in and I think most manufacturers do a fairly decent job at designing these pouches and I don't have any meaningful way to improve on that. So because that way I know, okay, this is my uh, knitter's pipe carbon set and here are all the needles and I don't need to search too long for them. So I just put them in as they are. I think that is perfectly fine. I also have another drawer where I put all my notions. So um, say stitch markers, pins, scissors, uh, fair aisle rings and uh, yarn guides, these kind of things. In each and every one of these items goes into an extra box, tapestry needles, so I can find them easily and it's well organized. Here are two more very smart options for people who have a lot of knitting needles. So um, these are plastic tubes and you can use them to store double pointed knitting needles inside. Just use a little tape or something and write the needle size or whatever it is on, on it and then put every, all these little cubes in one box. I think it's very, very smart as well. These are produced by Signature Needle Arts, uh, but uh, I, I'm reasonably sure if you go to Amazon or I don't know, Alibaba or whatever, AliExpress, you will find something very, very similar for actually a lot uh, less. Another thing you might want to uh, look at, so you can use a standard folder and some of these sturdier uh, um, foil sheets and then just uh, insert your circular knitting needles. I guess it probably would use, I wouldn't use it for double pointed knitting needles, but for circular needles, that's actually quite smart. Now I personally don't use, I prefer my system because here you kind of need to leave through until you find your um, circulars. I can just instantly grab, you know, I need some three millimeter uh, circulars, just grab them here, you need to leave through. But it's certainly an option and most people actually will have a folder at home and some of these sheets, so it might be the cheaper or easier option. And another thing I really want to show you is, uh, well, this plastic drawer. I actually used uh, this one here before I finally finished my studio. So it really, that's why it's a little bit dusty, and uh, it really served me well. So. Here, top drawer, all the DPNs, middle drawer are circular knitting needles, and here below you can store all the uh, knitting needle sets. I mean, it might not be the prettiest solution, but uh, if that's none of your concern, I think this is very, very nice. I mean, at the end of the day, I know this is a lot of plastic. So that's plastic within plastic within plastic. And maybe your needles are plastic as well. So that's a lot of plastic. You will certainly be able to find uh, alternatives, but wooden drawers or wooden boxes are typically very expensive, while cardboard, uh, cardboard boxes are often a little bit harder to find, sturdy ones at least. And at the end of the day, I see it like this. So I am a knitting professional. I do, this is my job. And I'm probably going to use boxes like this one here for a very, very long time. And it's, you know, it's not like this one time used plastic straw or a plastic bag. You just throw away and I don't know, ends up in some river when, and then in the Pacific Ocean or so. So I think I'm, I'm personally fine with that as long as I limit that uh, to my professional work. Uh, decide for yourself if you are fine with that or not. There are certainly alternatives. Uh, this is just the system that I use right now.
in that context I really need to mention because you saw a lot of storage solutions, a lot of expensive knitting needles like these signature needle RCPNs here in this video and I really need to imprint this on you. Owning more knitting needles doesn't make you a better knitter. Now I mean if you started with sanded down chopsticks and then you buy those uh, first real needles that certainly is an improvement. But between Knitter's Pride, Chagu, Haya Haya, Adi or so the differences are minor at best. I mean, we're looking at the last five or 10%, but the rest is practice. So don't um, combat your insecurities or your lack of experience with, you know, throwing money at companies that bring out a new differently looking pair of needles out every year. That won't make you a better knitter and actually it might not even imp uh, you know, improve the joy knitting brings to you. So just buy what you really need. And uh, especially when influencers like me or YouTubers show you all that stuff, rein yourself in. And if you want to buy something, you know, wait a night, sleep over it, maybe two. And then if you wake up and go, no, I really want this, I really need this, then buy things and not just go on a shopping spree without thinking. Here are two more notes. So first of all, I also have a video on how I organize my stash, how to organize yarn. I'll link it to you up in here in case you are interested. And more importantly, every odd couple of years, go through your collection and you know, just get rid of all those knitting needles you haven't touched in years. I mean, maybe you are emotionally attached to your first pair of knitting needles, but those old bamboo knitting needles with these stiff cables, you probably won't knit with them ever again. Give them away, give them to a beginner that wants to learn and I promise you they will be glad that they have something to get started with without investing a fortune. Really, why burden yourself with tools you know you are never gonna use again? It's not only gonna take up more space, it will also make finding the knitting needles you really need that much harder. So maybe use this video here as a reminder to go through your collection and identify those circulars or DPNs or straight knitting needles, single pointed knitting needles. I, I don't think I have a knitted a single stitch with a single pointed knitting needles in three decades. Sell them or give them away to charity. Local schools, primary schools or craft schools are often very, very happy to receive these spare tools for free. And relieve yourself of that burden. To me, that sounds a lot smarter than investing money into buying a storage solution for tools that you will never use again. Anyway, that was my video on how to store and organize your knitting needles. Comment below if you worked out a system that works very well for you that I haven't mentioned. I'm sure the other people watching will find it super interesting. Comment with your questions, like this video if you enjoyed watching. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.